Welcome to our review on light microscopy. First thing we really need to think about is how on earth we actually got these things called microscopes in the first place. Now, if we think back to when microscopes were first developed, we need to go back to the mid 17th century. And what we have are very basic versions of the microscope compared to what we see today. But since that point in the mid 17th century, they've actually continued to develop and improve. And over the next couple of videos, we're going to have a look and see how these different types of microscopes have come into existence and what they actually tell us. But the key thing to remember about why we use a microscope is that it allows us to see things that we can't see with the naked eye. The first type of microscope we're going to focus on are light microscopes. Now, what I've given you in the center there then is a picture of a typical light microscope. The one difference you may see depending on how up to date your microscopes in your school lab are is if you've got a light source that's actually fixed or whether you've got a dodgy little mirror that's probably held on by blue tack in this stage. So that's the only bit that changes. Everything else will be the same no matter what the source of light. And you need to be able to label or recognize these different parts of the light microscope. So I've given you a little revision hint there to print it off and then stick post-it notes or little flaps of paper over the name so you can test yourself over and over again. Just to take you through those key parts then, we've got the eyepiece lens, which is the one you look through. The objective lens is the one that you can twist to change. The stage is where we put our slide. And then we've got two focusing dials on the side there, the coarse focus and the fine focus. When it comes to light microscopes, this is one of your required practicals. So you need to be able to describe how to carry out an experiment using a light microscope to observe something. So the first thing we do is we lower the stage to its lowest position and we select the objective lens with the lowest magnification. You then put your slide onto the stage and looking through the eyepiece lens, then you turn the coarse focus knob slowly until you see your object come into focus. What you then need to do is use the fine focus just to slowly adjust it until it becomes perfectly clear. Once you've done that, you can then use steps four and five again with the higher magnification objective lens just to reveal more detail. But you will need to just finely tune that focus each time you adjust your objective lens. One of the things that you could be asked to do is to actually make a drawing of something from a microscope. Now, there's a few key things to remember here when you are creating a microscope drawing. First thing, this is not art. We are talking about biology here. Biology and art when we come to drawing are so completely different. So when we are doing a microscope drawing, remember it's a scientific drawing which means we're going to be using a sharp pencil first of all. Please don't draw in pen. If you make a mistake, you've got no options. There's nothing you can do. You've used up the space they've given you and then you're trying to draw it on additional pages. It may be the wrong size, etc. So use a pencil because we can rub out mistakes. Secondly, use clear unbroken lines. That means none of this little shady, shady, cross hatchy stuff that you do in art, none of that. Just this nice, clear, decisive, unbroken line. Do not color in or shade anything on the diagram. It should be a line drawing. That's it. If we're drawing something like a cell, then remember to use the correct proportions for any of the subcellular structures present. And finally, if they've asked you to label certain things, then obviously label them using a ruler to draw a nice straight line to the actual feature and taking it outside the cell to write your label. Do remember not to cross your lines or do some weird like hunt down the end of a line thing for the examiner. They're not paid enough to actually spend that much time looking at it folks. Make their job easy. And then finally don't forget to include the magnification. When it comes to working out the magnification then what we need to do is look at the eyepiece lens magnification and the objective lens magnification. And all we do is multiply those together. So for example, if our eyepiece lens was times 10 and our objective lens was times 40, 
then 40 times 10 gives us our total magnification of times 400. The next calculation you could be asked to carry out is to work out the size of the specimen from a diagram. Now, the way we actually do this, first of all, is we need to have a ruler and measure the actual diagram or the image really, really carefully in millimetres. So that doesn't mean just chuck the ruler vaguely on there and then take a bit of an estimate. I mean actually take the time to line it up properly and double check it. So once you've got that measurement in millimetres, then what you need to do is divide that by the magnification that the image was taken under. And I've given you the little triangle in the bottom left there just in case they asked you to do anything else. One of the things we need to consider when we're talking about cells is what units we're actually going to use to describe either the cell or the subcellular structures. And just to give you a bit of an idea about what these units actually mean, I've given you a little bit of a conversion chart on the left. So a kilometre is the same as a thousand metres, and a metre is 100 centimetres, and one centimetre is 10 millimetres. Hopefully those three are quite familiar to you from just general knowledge and what you've done in maths and science previously. The bottom two are where we're coming into our new level of understanding. So one millimetre is the same as a thousand micrometres, and one micrometre is the same as a thousand nanometers. We could always write nanometers in a slightly different way. So if we wanted to use our standard form, then what we do is one nanometer is one times 10 to the power minus nine meters. So just make sure you are familiar with these different units and what they actually equate to. When it comes to actually preparing a specimen to view under a microscope, you can't just grab it, chuck it under there and have a look at it. And the reason for that is that many cells are actually colourless. So that if you were to try that, you wouldn't really see anything. So what we actually do is we use these things called stains to make them more visible by colouring the cell. Now, do go careful not to refer to these as dyes or anything along those lines. The word we need to use is stain. And what we find is that by selecting different stains, we can then show up different things. So we've got some stains that will colour the whole cell and others that are going to highlight specific subcellular structures within the cell itself. Just to give you an idea of three different stains that we could have used in class, you've got methylene blue, which is what you'd have used had you looked at your cheek cells under the microscope, and that makes the nucleus easier to see in animal cells, and you can see that on the left. Second one is iodine, which you'd have used if you did the onion cells, and that makes the nucleus easier to see in the plant cells, as you can see in the middle picture there. And then finally, crystal violet is the stain we use on bacterial cell walls, and you can see the little purple blobs in the bottom left are bacterial cells. In terms of how we actually apply the stain to our specimen, once we've got our cells on the slide, we then use a dropping pipette to add a single drop of stain. Once we've done that, we place a cover slip on top. Now, the cover slip is that little tiny square of glass that's incredibly thin, and you've probably broken several in your time of using them. So we place that on top and gently lower it down with a needle, as you can see in the bottom diagram there. Once we've done that, you then just very gently tap the cover slip to remove any air bubbles. And when I say gently, I do mean really gently. That doesn't mean you then get the needle and start banging on it and trying to drill through it because it will break. It's a tiny, fragile piece of glass. Just very gently tapping on the edge just to get those air bubbles off to the side so they then don't interfere with your viewing. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can recall the names of the different parts of the light microscope. You can talk about how to use a light microscope to view a specimen, including the stains that we could use and how we apply them. And you can also carry out calculations about magnification and the size of the specimen.